All right, in this video, we are going to take a quick dip into the pool of discrete math. We are also going to talk about the concept of factorial. So what is discrete math? Well, for our purposes, we are going to only look at problems that have discrete numbers. So let's start off with uh, zero and go up by whole numbers, one, two, three, four, five, on to infinity. So hooray, no decimals, no fractions, no percents. Discrete math is really important because of the fundamental counting rule. And the fundamental counting rule is used to count the total number of possibilities. Now, since this isn't your first statistics video you've watched for this course, you've had some probability of an event E. And to find this correct answer, your numerator is what you desire. And the denominator is the number of possibilities. And in discrete math, what we are looking for is we're looking for how many possibilities are there. We're looking to see what that physical number is. So let me give you a quick example, one that you don't even need to write down. How many numbers are there on a six-sided die? Nope, not a trick question. The answer is six. So in discrete math, we would count that up as a six because there is a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six to make a total of six. Now, if you had a 10-sided die, and this is important for our um, third example, if you had a 10-sided die, there would be 10 numbers on the die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So the correct answer there would be 10, even though the zero on the 10-sided die is the 10th number. So you're literally counting how many ways there are to do it. So let's do an example. Even before we dive deep into factorial notation, and let's talk about breaking into some security system. So obviously you need to know when you're sitting at that keyboard, you need to know a couple things about the password. Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is the password has three characters. Okay, three characters. So you know it's a three letter combo and we are not gonna distinguish between capital and non-capital letters and we're not gonna consider those characters to be symbols or numbers. So we have the um, possibilities are endless. But then you ask, hey, I want another hint. So I said, okay, um, your hint is the word hint, H, I, N, and T. So now you know that you have three characters of the word hint to type in to crack the code. Now that's the only thing I've told you, but you're allowed one more guess or one more question. And your question is this, do we get to repeat the letters? So for this first example here, I'm gonna give this a part A, is what if the answer is yes for repetition? So we can repeat. So we can do this here, and that means a possible um, password would be three H's in a row, or you could have three N's in a row. Obviously you can have any three letters comprised of the word hint, like T-H-I or N-T-H. So the big question is how many different ways do you have to try this before you know you will have one of the correct answers? So to solve this problem, we have to think, okay, how many ways were there to pick a letter? In this case, there were four ways to pick a letter. Now, how many ways is there to pick the second letter? Well, since we can repeat letters, the answer is four again. And then finally, to pick the third letter, we have four choices because we were allowed to repeat. So this kind of brings us to the fundamental counting rule again, because if there are 
a number of ways to do something and then another number of ways to do something, as long as they're independent, you can multiply them. And there you go. So four times four times four. There are, if I go four times four is 16 and 16 times four, that makes 64 ways to take three letters of the word hint and create a passcode. So you would want me to give you at least 64 tries and odds are is that you will actually get it before the 64th trial and uh, you will be into the system. Now, in part B of this example, what if you can't repeat? So there's no repetition. Well, that means you would start off with four because you could pick any of these four letters. But then you can't pick the same letter again. So now you have three letters to choose from. And then the next example would have two letters to choose from. Four times three times two is 24 ways if you are allowed to not repeat. So you're kind of hoping that the three letter passcode that will get you into this system from the letters hint have no repetition because then you would only need 24 guesses to ensure that you'd have all of the different possibilities for the problem. So on a quick side note, your chances of getting it right the first time would be one out of 24. Okay, because you would again have 24 ways to do this and there's only one right way to do it. But we talked about discrete math, let's not bring fractions into this here. Let's do another example. Let's do another example, and let's do another example of creating an eight, um, spa uh, eight, well, I see the thing is I don't want to say the word characters, but an eight um, length password, okay? An eight length password, so you have to have eight different things in it. Now, here are the criteria. You need, first of all, three letters. Okay, now these three letters, we're not going to distinguish between capital and non-capital, okay? Then, after the three letters, you need five numbers, okay? Five numbers. The numbers zero through nine. And for part A of this problem, you're going to be allowed to, or you're going to be restricted to not repeat. Let me make that a little better. Not repeat. Okay, no repetition here. So, you're gonna pick your first letter. You have 26 ways to do it. You're gonna pick your second letter. Since you can't repeat, 25 ways to do it. You're gonna pick your third letter, 24 ways to do it. Now we got five numbers. Well, the first number, you got 10. 10 ways to do it. Now, some of you might make a mistake and put nine here, and the reason why you might put nine is because you might think to yourself there are nine numbers, but you're, there's actually 10 if you include the zero. And then after you pick your first number, you gotta pick your second number, then pick your third number, then pick your fourth number, then pick your fifth number. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now before I add this up, I would like you to think about what would happen to this equation here, if you could repeat. So you don't have to repeat, but what if repeating is okay? What would you have instead of 26, 25, 24 for your three letters and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 for your five numbers? Well, for your three letters, they would all be 26s because you could pick triple A, triple B, triple C, you could pick any three letters in a row. Okay, what about picking five numbers? Well, you could choose all the same number, so these are five tens. So what we're going to do now is compute this. Now, get ready for some big numbers here. Okay, I strongly recommend that you change your calculator into classic mode. 
And the reason why if you have a newer calculator to click the mode key and change to classic mode is because now you can see everything on the screen. Look, 26 times 25 times 24 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. You'll notice that it wrapped around the screen so you can see all the things at once, which is much better than I think the newer calculators, which you would have you, you know, kind of wrap. Uh, it would just like scroll left and right, and you have to kind of like look back and forth. I like this better. Holy smokes, will you take a look at that? That's 471,744,000 ways to do this problem. Now let's do the next one. 26, hmm, all right, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna go 26 raised to the third power because that's another way of writing 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 raised to the fifth power, which is another way of writing 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Look at that. That is much higher than the 471 million. This is 1 billion. 757 million 600,000 ways to make an eight a uh, password of eight um, characters characters that also have three letters and five numbers holy smokes can you imagine how many more possibilities there would be if we looked at capital and non-capital letters those 26s would turn into 52s what if we threw in symbols you know, like exclamation marks and pound keys and dollar signs and percent symbols. Wow, think of all the ways you can do it. But if you really want to be and have the most robust passwords, uh, most cryptologists say type a sentence such as, this is my password, period. There are so many ways, and that's first of all a really long password, but there's so many ways that you could just try to guess that password, but you know, I'm not trying to tell you how to do things, but man, passwords are tricky, especially trying to remember them all, right? Okay, so we did some cool examples from discrete math, and now it's time to talk specifically about the factorial notation. So let me do a little bit of, you know, kind of like keep this over here by itself, but what is factorial? Factorial notation gets us the answer to this question. How many outcomes, how many outcomes are there if you take all items in order? Now what's important about what I capitalized here and here and underlined is that we, in the next video, will take a look at permutations and combinations where they will figure out different an answer to this question. How many outcomes if you take all items in order? So here is the factorial notation. It is given by n exclamation mark, which shouldn't be read as n, it's n factorial. An n factorial is given by taking n, which is how many objects there are, and then multiplying it by one fewer than that, and then multiplying that by one fewer than that, or two from the original number, and you keep going and going and going until you get down to one. That answer is n factorial. So for 1a, 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's say you have a favorite band and the band has made seven really great albums. If you were asked to put them in order from best to worst, you'd have seven choices at the very start. But once you picked their favorite album, then you'd have six to choose from. And then you'd have five, four, three, two, then one. Now, if someone had to randomly guess that in order, that would be really challenging. And the reason why is because this would be a pretty big number. Because if you have seven albums to choose from, then you have six, then you have five, then you have four, then you have three, then you have two, and then you have one, there are 5,040 ways to do this. So in terms of discrete math, there were 5,040 possibilities. 
to count seven objects in order. So I took all of them and put them in a specific order. There'd be 5,040 ways to do it. So if someone was to randomly guess what your albums were and had no idea anything about it, they would have a one in 5,040 way to do it, which would be practically, practically improbable. So now I want to kind of talk about four factorial. If you kind of look up here at example one, part B, you can see that we did something kind of close to that because you had to choose from four letters. And then you had to choose three letters and then you had to choose two letters. In true factorial form, we would actually have to multiply by this one. And four times three times two times one is four factorial or 24. But there's a way to do this a little easier on the calculator. Type in the number four and then click on the math key. There's a math key under the alpha key and above this little X inverse key. So click on the math key under the alpha and you are given a menu system of math, numbers, and so on. But you want the last option there, which is probability. Notice option four on this calculator is an exclamation mark. So we'll scroll on down to four and now we have four factorial. Four factorial is 24. And we could have done the same thing here we, for the previous problem. We could type in seven, we could click math, we can move backwards to probability to get to that menu quickly, and then we click down to four and voila, 5,040. Now let's look at part C. Part C is one factorial. So if you have one item, how many ways can you put the one item in order? Well, if you have one item and you can only have one item to put in order, one factorial would be, there it is, one. So one factorial is one. But now we've got a trickier problem. Okay, so we know that one factorial is indeed one, but what is zero factorial? Because we have no items. We have no items. And we have to put those zero items in order. Okay, so what might make the most, um, the most sense is actually what's not right. Zero factorial is not zero. Now, I'm not going to get into the grad level explanation of why zero factorial is not zero. So I am going to really simplify this with an analogy that uh, most uh, PhD uh, discrete math professors might cringe at a little bit. But for us, it works, okay? Suppose you have absolutely nothing in front of you. How many ways? is there to grab all of it in order. Well, if you imagine reaching out and grabbing nothing, there's only one way to do it. Because if you reach out and grab nothing, you're holding nothing. And that's one. Zero factorial is one. Zero factorial is one. Okay, now the, one of the cool things about that is you're going to see problems in the next unit where you're going to get to a zero factorial in the denominator, which makes one, which is great because dividing by one is really easy. Um, dividing by zero is not great. Um, kind of breaks a lot of laws of algebra. So let's just kind of say for our level here, zero factorial is one because if you want all of zero in order, there's one way to get it and that's one nothing. <laughs> Right. All right. Um, that's going to end this video here talking about discrete math and factorial notation. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to really drive into permutation and combination and why for your entire life you've been told the wrong word for opening up a locker.